I don't think we have ever seen a result as high as that. Okay, today, no. Today, no. What am I doing today? <laughs> today, I'm gonna be suffering hard. I'm gonna be doing the world's hardest climbing test to see what the potential max grade is that I can climb. I'm gonna be tested by the founder of Lattice Training and that is Tom Randall. Hey, yeah, all Hello. right. Yes, okay. but we need to set you up properly. Get that bad boy on. I thought we talked about this. No, no. I kind of wanna be taken seriously. This is my job, like actual coaching and training. <laughs> Put it on. We're on the Wide Boys channel now. Pete's just warming up and we're gonna prepare him for the testing ahead. It is just his body that we're preparing, not his mind. I don't know if he's ready for that. So what I'm trying to get from today is what grade I'm currently at and what grade I can potentially get to within my climbing. I've seen some videos of Magnus do it, Louis do it, and I know other really good climbers have been put through this test as well. It's quite strange that I've never actually been through a full lattice test. So it's gonna be interesting. We'll have to see uh, what he puts me through. First thing we need to do is get some basic measurements off you for height, weight, uh, age, etc. Goals. Goals. For climbing, height. 177. Do I go tops off? 71.4. Is that more or less than you were thinking? I usually range from 69 to 72. What is the maximum sport grade that you've climbed in the last two years in less than 10 sessions? 8B plus. Trad grade? What have we done in the last few years? I think 8B for, for trad. Bouldering grade? 8B. 8B, yeah. But it's a crack, 8A if not a crack. Okay. So I don't know whether you want to factor that in. What are you actually aiming for? Let's, let's talk about performance, single pitch. I think 9A on trad. So that's gonna be kind of effectively 9A plus sport that you're gonna have to have in, in the tank. I think we plug that higher score in. Yes. Because it's a little bit more realistic. Yes. Alongside that, which I think is really critical, is your bouldering goal grade that you need to get to to basically match up with that 9A plus standard. I don't think I would have to be able to climb 8B plus boulder to climb 9A plus root is my thought. But I think if I was as steady on the 8B boulders as I am 8A boulders, then totally I would be in with that. Yeah, because you yeah. climb 8A quite fast. Yes. Yeah. I ba <laughs> basically, like I climb 8A within a session or two, but yeah. I just never try anything harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I've only climbed up to 8A. Okay. So <laughs> what we're really saying here is if you projected it properly, you probably would be climbing 8B+. Yeah, maybe. One yeah. or two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all I need. That's all we need. Yeah. Okay, folks. We've got a 9A goal, a trad 9A goal, and we're 177 centimetres tall. Let's do this test. <laughs> I thought I could add in a little extra for you. Right. Which would be all of our tests. All of them? in a session. Is that not what you usually do anyway? No, no man or woman has ever completed this challenge. So it really is the world's hardest test. This is harder than Magnus's test. This is considerably harder than Magnus's. Harder than Magnus's test, everybody. One arm dynamic engagement, and then the one arm dynamic engagement with an additional 10% on top of body weight. I wanna see total control, good. And then right? Yeah, good. No problem, right, I'm gonna grab 10% 10 of 10 body weight. What's that, Pete? So like seven kilos. Point one. <laughs> <laughs> Tom's not the only one who can do science, right? Is that 10%? It's eight. Ooh, hello. Good. Okay, good. Is that right? Yeah. I saw a nice little shake in the tricep there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> max two rep pull up. I'm gonna get a dipping belt out, attach it to your waist, and I'm gonna slowly build up weight on you until we get to the maximum weight that you can add to body weight and still complete two full pull ups in the climbing pull up position grip rather than the chin up. Yeah, I could even be down at like 35 kilos on this actually. Okay, so you wanna start at 20 just to get warmed up into it? Yeah, we could start at like yeah. Tw yeah, 25 or something, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Put 10 on. I'm not feeling strong in it though, it must be said. <laughs> what's, your, uh, what's your prediction for what Pete's going to do? Low 40s. I don't. 
We're on 30 and that feels quite heavy. Is it? He tricked me. He tricked me. So what are we on to next, Pete? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> so we're on 40.5. <laughs> oh, we're cooking big numbers here. We're cooking big numbers. One, good side. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah, that's starting to get hard now. I think I've got, yeah, not that much more in me. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, good. Come on. Come on. Come on, 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 come on. What was that, 43, I think? 45.5. It's either this or, or the other one, I think. Yeah. yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on. Yeah, it's your neighbor. Good, come on, come on. Go big, go big. Come on, 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 come on. Yeah, you got it. Did I get it? Yeah, you did. Oh, I got it. You had a really good chin thrust. Chin, there. your chin thrust. Pete's score on that one was 45.5 kilograms added to body weight. What we're going to do now is move on to a combination of doing some of the flexibility tests, but also warming him up for the finger strength test. Oh, I'll give you that. Very good. Ooh. That was hard work, actually. <laughs> Next up, we're going to be looking at ankle flexibility. So what we're going to use is this testing block here. The knee is going to rotate in and try and touch the wall. The maximum score that Pete's going to be getting is as far as he can get his toe away from the wall, yet still touch the wall here with his knee. This test is a really good marker for how close someone can get their knee into the wall whilst using a really smeary, flat, slopey hold. So trad climbers, uh, slab climbers, anyone who's really good on vertical terrain should score well on this. High score on this one is anything from 20 centimetres and upwards. Ankle flexibility. I actually feel quite positive about this one. That's yep. just actually on the, on the right. Ooh. So 16 and a half and 16. 16 and a half and 16. Yeah. Ooh. After Tom said 20 was good, I thought I was going to do Smash better it. than 16. Yeah, actually on that one. So that's slightly surprising. Maybe my ankle flexibility needs to be worked on. Data never lies. Data never lies. This test is a really basic hip flexibility test. Facing the wall. Yeah. Turn feet out. Yeah. I'm going to measure from inside of heel to inside of heel, and then we're going to relate that back to your height. 100% of your own height is good. 100%? Yeah. You'll, you'll do it. That's a lot. No, you'll do it. 177 centimeters. Yeah. Are we good? Yeah. <sighs> okay, I'm maxed. Okay, yeah. 180. 180? I'm over the height. I'm over the height. There folks. you go. That's solid. Oh, is that solid? Yeah. Yeah. Right, you want to do some finger strength? Finger strength. Yeah, we should do yeah, some finger slowly. strength. Yeah. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the free online testing tool, My Fingers. Just Google it. You can compare yourself to Pete. Uh, it's totally free. It's going to give you a marker of your performance profiling when it comes to finger strength in relation to sport and bouldering grade. It doesn't tell you that you do climb this grade or should climb this grade. It's a performance marker so that it may inform what you do with your training from here. What is your prediction for me? I'm going to say 58 kilograms. 58 kilos. 58 kilos, everybody. Yeah. I'm going 59. <clears throat> okay, so I will start as soon as your feet leave the ground and then I will count you down through it. Oh, I'm Two, not going to get 59 on three, that. Three, four, five, six, down. Oof, stop. 59 is going to be hard. Definitely was that 40, an extra 20 kilos on yeah. that. That's going to be spicy. Yeah, 51 is mm. the best I've ever got on this. For seven seconds. Yeah. Mm. This is 50, minute. isn't it? Mm hmm. What do you think of my screensaver? You see the resemblance? Yeah. <sighs> Two, three, four, five, six, down. <sighs> Quite Good. happy with that, actually. 55 kgs. <laughs> Five. Muff. <laughs> okay, I think we'll come think, back down a bit. Yeah, I think I could be um, be maxed on that. I actually think it's also another really interesting thing in terms of really well-trained climbers. They don't realise the difference or the ability to with which they've got so controlled, so close to their maximum. Yeah. So you feel very comfortable at 90 plus percent of your maximum and you feel total chill, whereas 
an untrained athlete in anything, if you put them to 90% and say, how do you feel? Be like, absolutely just yes. huffing out my ass. Mm. When you watch good climbers on the wall and they look really chill, and yeah. suddenly they fall off, mm. you're like, why is that? You're like, well, I was at maximum for the last two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't, can't tell. Yeah. 53. Right. Reputation's on the line. I think that was it, that's my max. So my score was 53. You wanna go onto the My Fingers app, see if you can beat me. I'm sure you will be able to smash it out, go for it. Next test is a low row, five rep max test. So what we're looking at is the strength and conditioning that Pete has to pull the shoulder back, retract that shoulder, kind of like a lock off position on a climbing wall. And this one is done with free weights and we find the maximum weight that he can do five reps with. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be pretty happy for Pete if he was doing this around 40 kg. Okay, 25 kgs to start. <laughs> that was all right at 25, yeah. I imagine that could get quite hard quite quickly because you know when you do like single arm things, like as soon as you start to add that weight, it's like bicep curls, it's like, Oh, it's all right, it's easy, it's easy. And then you just put like two kilos on, you're like, Ugh! So it could be the same sort of thing. 35. 35, yeah. pumping it up. Four, five, four. I still go to 40, next. 40, after doing 35, I actually feel quite confident on 40. Can I take this jacket off yet? No, <laughs> definitely don't take that off. You're doing well in it, because you're actually, you're actually saying some sensible answers today, <laughs> which is gonna be like beneficial and factual for the viewers. Five. Yeah, good. That was good form, actually. Five. Yeah, good. I think the right felt a bit stronger. And what are we on now? 45. 45, yeah. That's a good solid weight. 45. I'll, I'll be impressed. One, two, three, four. <coughs> yeah, I'll give you that one. Yeah? Yeah. If I had to give a climber a superpower of either being able to do amazing at pull-ups or really good on low row, I'd rather give them low row. I think it has a better application and transfer across into real rock climbing. Pull-ups is just a little bit more relevant to very, very steep climbing. Yes, I think that's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 50, yeah. You'd be pleased to be a bicep curl in that, wouldn't you? One. No. No, the elbow's not going, not going uh, up. higher than your shoulder. It's actually going, Let's uh, stopping like there, like level your lats. Let's put it in between 45 and 50. 47, we're at 47. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Clean all those. One, two, three, four, five. <sighs> Let's finish on that. <laughs> That's <effort>. fine. <laughs> the next level up, because I said we're going to just put everything into Pete's day, the digital force plate testing, which is the one that Magnus did, the one that Louis did, Dave McLeod, Steve McClure, Sasha DeJulian, Alex Puccio. It's really detailed, but it's also very, very hard. So we get from it maximum force and we're going to test this importantly with Pete in his full crimp so that's like his superpower then we're also going to test it in a slightly more open grip position we're going to find out the rate of force development so how fast can he create force also critical force which is like a power endurance test and it's a real suffer fest so that's where you're going to see Pete really go all in and we'll see how capable he is potentially of climbing 9a plus sight ready for it it's what everybody is always talking about the critical force test at Lattice, how they come away with dead forearms. So I'm excited about that. So each test has a different methodology for it. When we're looking for maximum strength, it's a peak force that's maintained over a short period. For rate of force development, we're trying to do the fastest amount or the greatest amount of force that we can create in a sub one second kind of window. And then for our critical force, we're doing a set of repeated maximum contractions. And as you get fatigued, you obviously can produce less and less force. You kind of fight the pump, you know, grip through it and see what kind of strength endurance you've got. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do maximum finger strength. Yeah, maximum. And hanging, we're gonna yeah. do this in three grip positions. Half crimp, open four, full crimp. Full crimp, okay, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just three, two, one. 
Come on, pull, 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 good, good. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, four, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. <sighs> oh, that was odd. I don't feel like I was pulling max, but maybe I was. I don't know, it's weird when you can't lift your feet off the floor. I mean, you can Is go, it... lift the fleet off the floor, you want. No, no, I can't. Yeah. But that's what <laughs> I mean, because yeah. I can't in that position, if you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Half Left hand, half grip. Yeah. yeah. Are we ready? Let's go. Come on. Pull, 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 pull. Really good. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Four, <coughs> five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But yeah, you scored like a touch higher on that one. On the left? Yeah. Yeah. But you're like 10 kilos under your body weight. Seven, eight, no. Ah. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Stopped a second early. Yeah, was on the stoppage. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was slightly slow on the tight uh, Okay. Still yeah. How did it feel? I'm not sure it felt any better than the, uh, the half crimp, to be honest. But very similar. Very similar. Yeah. It felt it, it felt it, yeah. Come on, come on. Eight, nine, ten. <sighs> Eight, nine, ten. <sighs> Good. Felt a bit stronger on that. Felt a bit more even, that one, actually. That was really flat. Yeah, felt more even. Eight, <laughs> nine, ten. Good. Next test is rate of force development. Yep. RFD, which is essentially like contact strength. This is about catching holds at your absolute maximum and how much force you can create on that. So that's like your slap moves, dinos, dead points, etc. Comp climbers and your boulders. Are comp, be, cl comp climbers and boulders, this is going to be, be good. the greatest limiting factor. It is important for everyone, but depending on your style discipline, that it's going to have a, a variance yeah. on that. But they're going to be good at this. It depends on the style. It depends on the style. Yeah. It depends on the style. But it's going to be a more important limiting factor yeah. for them. Got it. Uh, yeah. This is your preferred grip position. I preferred, so yeah, what so I'm going to get max in, so I should yeah. just do a crimp really. Three, two, one. Pull, 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 and down. <laughs> pull, 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 down. <laughs> I've done something like that before in testing or training, so. But I mean, it makes sense. It's kind of like catching a hold. One. Go! Four, 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 and four. <sighs> that was maybe your flattest one. Next up is the critical force test. This is the suffer fest, the one that Pete has been looking forward to all day. He's been doing a seven, three repeater. So seven seconds pulling really hard, three seconds resting really short, back on, repeating that for a total of four minutes. That's the test done. He's then gonna take a little break, swap onto his right hand, and he's gonna to go to full crimp. We don't normally do this, but I think it's gonna be really interesting seeing how Pete performs on full crimp, his superpower, the thing he likes the most, versus that open hand grip. I'm gonna predict that Pete does pretty well on this test. It might even produce scores I've maybe never seen before. He and, didn't say and... which way, did he? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. If this makes me either pass out or throw up, then it's, then it's something else because both of those things I've never done in terms of climbing or yeah, passing out, never passed out ever. So let's see if it happens. <clears throat> Four, three, two, one. Oh, really good scores, really good. On, come on, keep it up, come on. Come on. Four, three, two. Off, <sighs> one, off, <sighs> one, two, one, and time. <sighs> Good effort. <sighs> yeah, the forearm is, oh, it's like tired in my bicep as well, actually. It's like, oh, didn't pass out. I was giving it everything and I was trying to take as much weight as possible by lifting my feet up as much as possible. And then when I felt them slipping, I'd just put a touch more weight on the feet. So I was trying to give it like, you know, the max I could through through the bar. Definitely trying to give it as max I could, yeah. There's a really distinct pattern of the very best climbers being really good at accessing the kind of full, all-in, tried-hard element. And as you can see with Pete, I mean, you'll know this from this channel, he's, he's really good at getting into the last few percentage points. And it, it counts when you can do that, you know, season after season, training session after training session. We're gonna now do this with Pete's right hand, but in full crimp. This isn't normal standard procedure, but he loves a full crimp. And I know Pete just hasn't suffered enough yet. So one, off, <sighs> two, one, on, good. Two, 
One. On. Really pulling in. Two. Three. Two. One. Off. Good. Two. One. On. Come on. Don't lose form now. Right at the end. Your last turn. Come on. Two. One. Off. Two. One. On. Damn it. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. That's horrendous in a crimp. Horrendous. <laughs> No, I don't recommend doing that with any of your clients. <laughs> That's not good. That's not good. Not in the crimp. Just um, really, uh, it puts <laughs> really puts pressure through that index finger. I was, sli I was slipping at the end with the thumb. I was slipping on my own blood <laughs> when oh, I put no. it on. It just, um, so much pressure going through the index finger on a crimp for a very, very long time. Like that didn't feel good. Like halfway through, I was like, this is not good. You should have just stopped. But, <laughs> no, no, but you need to get a result. <laughs> Max press up test next. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, then that's all right. Max pull ups. Pre Max press ups. Yeah. Oh, God. Two, one, go. Two. Five, <laughs> one. Keep going. Body. Yes. Yes. Well done. <laughs> oh, that was quite hard at the end there. We are now doing a max pull-up test for Pete at body weight. So a little bit more emphasis on how long can he go for at a set intensity One. on those pull-ups. Three. Four. Three. Come on, keep it consistent, keep it consistent. Come on, 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 so we've finished the test and now this is what everybody has been waiting for, the results. And we started out with a goal that I had. So that is potentially sometime in the future trying to climb 9A on trad, which means you would need to be at a, around about a 9A plus sport climbing level. So that's the level we want to be at. Uh, we've kind of, and we're going to see where we are now and what we need to get there. Yeah. So we're going to look at. Yeah, we're just gonna look at the whole range of results from all the testing that I did with Pete. And it's quite broad, and there are quite a lot of tests, different tests that we put him through. And I would also like to note for Pete and yours benefit that he was quite tired by the end of some of this testing. Uh, so it wasn't exactly how we do it. So we beasted him as well as getting some data out of him. Yeah, I feel like the pull-ups and the press-ups, yeah. they probably could have been a bit better but I feel like everything else was pretty reasonable. It was just the pull-ups and the press-ups at the end where I felt like I could have done a better job on those if I'd been fresh. Yeah. Yeah. Fortunately, there isn't that much correlation with pull-ups and no. press-ups <laughs> no. and climbing, so you're <laughs> yeah. absolutely fine. Yeah, good. So here they are, the results on the screen. Pete's strengths and weaknesses. First up is we've got his best root grade, which is referenced. This is importantly the last two years. So this is not all time best route. He's climbed multiple 8Cs and 8C plus, but this references recent times. And that's important when you do any kind of profiling or testing. Then his root goal grade, 9A. His best current boulder, again, in recent last two years. And then his boulder goal, which is gonna tie into that 9A plus root climbing goal and is sort of an equivalent in terms of the bouldering standard. Let's start with maximum finger strength. Importantly, when the testing with you is we did three different grip positions to look at the maximum force that you could create. So we had a open grip position with four fingers. We had a half crimp grip position. And then we also had a full crimp in four fingers. Um, so we're gonna see some differences on that. And then also what's to note additionally for anyone is that the way that we're doing this testing for finger strength is a much more what we call like a granular approach, so a much more accurate, detailed approach. 
So the results that you're gonna see with this in terms of data models is different from doing a basic max hang on a, a, you know, a fixed fingerboard. It's just a little bit more detailed. It, pick, it picks up more things, takes more things into account. So here we have our max finger strength scores, 86% of body weight on the left hand, and then 82% on your right hand. So significantly stronger on the left hand. Yeah, and I would say that is what I thought for that. In general, I think I have stronger fingers on the left. When I am doing fingerboarding, I have noticed that, like, oh, I'm better in the left than I am in the right. I can hold longer, hold more weight. So that's a, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this one was a half crimp grip position. That was the first one yeah. we did in the testing. And would you say is that your preferred grip position? Half crimp? Yeah. No, I'd say that's my worst, maybe. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought was probably my worst. Yeah. Half crimp. So we should have a look at the other basic numbers across the other grip positions yeah. and just see how those correlate. So our second test there is into our open hand grip position. And that one scored 87 and a half and then nearly exactly the same on yeah. the other side as so well. So this was four finger open. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it is a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. Which is what I thought. Yeah. Okay, so that's yeah. good. Uh, and yeah. much more consistent. Much more consistent. Sides, yeah. Which is actually really interesting. I wouldn't say that's typical. Oh, I, wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't see that a great deal. There's some, some noise here, um, a little bit difference. It might warrant actually going back and testing again, just to see if there's anything in that. Um, but yeah, a much flatter score across two of those. Yeah. And then finally, we also looked at our full crimp, where you definitely scored really well. So left hand full crimp, 95.5% of body weight and 91%-ish of your right hand on of body weight. Yeah, and I think that, that feels like it all makes sense to me. Like chisel or half crimp, I feel like it's the weakest. That what the forefinger drag, next so, and then the crimp is, that's what I always get out when things are spicy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we can also look at the amount of fade that you'll see or the decrease in total force over that 10 second hang during that period. So you can see with your right, you are able to maintain a higher peak force in, com in comparison to max. So comparison. Results, results, grades. results. Grades, everybody loves grades. We're on the grades. On your maximum finger strength score, then you come in at bang on average for the 8B plus root grade, which is good news. Excellent, that's good news. Not a strength, not a weakness. You're not in peak shape, so. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's you're doing absolutely fine. That's something, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's good. A little bit more interesting when it comes to your goal grades, so. though. Yes, goal grades, people. Goal grades. We've got nine A down here. Nine A. You're not at the bottom of the scale. You've you're effectively coming in at better than twenty, so a quarter of climbers at this grade. So there's still one in four. Yes, yeah, so there's still a number of people that won't be doing as well on finger strength and still being at the equivalent of that 9A root grade, but I think it's a, it's a strong indicator mm. that finger strength is gonna be a limiting factor to achieving 9A at present or where you are. Yes. And that's really the conclusion you should take from it. Not that yeah. it's impossible to climb 9A. No. It's just- That's a limiting, limiting factor. Yeah, and it's worth yeah. your time yeah. invested to do something about it. Which makes sense because I haven't been fingerboarding for eight months, or six months, so. Yeah, and, um, and, the, and the years that I've climbed with you, every time I see you get a little bit stronger on fingers, your grade tends yeah, to go yeah. a little better. So jumps up a I haven't bit, watched yeah. you climb over the years and gone, oh, he's a little bit fitter than he was two years ago. He's yeah. gone up a grade. Yeah. It's nearly always, it's always done strength. Yeah, no, Especially totally. strength. Totally. There's always going to be a degree of interpretation of this. It's not like some yeah, yeah, magical yeah, grade calendar yeah, yeah, that yeah, just yeah. pumps things out. Yeah. Uh, and it's like yeah. a tool. Yeah, that you, of course. That you would use of course. when you inform your training. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of space there for working. <laughs> <laughs> there's a big grey space for for working, so that's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Your yeah. power endurance <laughs> level. Yeah, critical force is the one which you saw me uh, shouting. That's critical force, so that's the one we're looking at now. And that's where I thought I have the, that's where my climbing has the most strengths, I would say. So with the critical force testing, this is one of the newer and most modern ways of analyzing fitness in relation to strength in sports science. So we'll use this a lot outside of climbing as well. So things like uh, cycling mm. are very, very good at using this particular testing method to assess the 
fitness of cyclists with their training regimes. And what we've done is this test, method of testing has a model that's built for it, which builds a value for a curve that occurs in here. It's kind of hard to see on the screen because it's very flat with your particular curve. But what we're trying to look at is you see decrease in force that you produced as you got more fatigued over the tests and where this line flattens out at the bottom where you could effectively maintain for quite a long time. Not mm. indefinitely, but a good period of time, like multiple minutes. Yeah. And that value for you came out at 61.1% of body weight. 61. This is an outrageously high score. 61.1%, outrageously high. <laughs> it's so high that I don't think we have ever seen a result as high as that ever in all the years of testing a lattice. So you smashed Dave Mack. Oh, there we go. Magnus. <laughs> That's something. And the Helica. And the Helica. And the Helica. Water. And the Helica. And the Helica. That's interesting. Yeah. Because he's a beast. You've taken top spot. I've taken top spot. So what does that mean? It basically means, if you look at the critical force, is that if you have a very, very high value, you're able to maintain a really high degree of force, so lots of strength, even when you're very fatigued. So this is great for root climbers, because we always go, yeah, it's brilliant being strong for boulder problems, but what if I can't sustain that bouldering strength over one minute, three minutes, 10 minutes? Pete's score means that he's very good at maintaining that strength over multiple minutes, so he's likely to get to the top of a route. The dream from here would be to increase the finger strength, but still keep that critical force level at 60%, because then you'd be flaming cooking. Well, you'd be climbing hard in 9A, 9A plus. Yeah, if you could get it at, at the max finger strength to, yeah. to body weight, let's say, for example. Yeah. And then at 60%, woof, that'd be, that'd be something. Um, I think for but, me, these, these results also make sense because I've given these uh, numbers. So I gave 8B plus at the start as a grade that I'd climbed in the last two years. But at the same time, I haven't actually tried anything harder than 8B plus in those last two years. And I would, I would feel in the shape that I am now, um, if I went to an 8B plus, I could climb it quite quickly. Mm. Like that's sort of how I feel. And the same with um, V11 as well. Like if I went to a V11, I feel like if I went there in the shape that I am now, I could climb it reasonably quickly. Um, so it does make sense that those are re like 70%, 60% sort yeah. of makes sense really. Yeah. Flexibility though. Flexibility. Yeah. Here we go. Flexibility. Ooh, we're quite high. Here's the reveal. Yeah. Quite high for the grade at least. Yeah. I mean, I think this was not unexpected. No. You were pretty confident that the the flexibility that you have, especially like in the lower body, is good. But if you were to look at a 9A climber, 9A plus 9B climber, are they generally better? Like, are they more flexible? Yeah, you, so you'll see a better profile. If you, if you profile and you um, mark people in a flexibility, both upper body and lower body for elite level climbers, they will perform better. Um, what you have to probably keep in mind is that things like flexibility, so your hip opening score or your two rep max pull up is gonna have a lower degree of correlation with grade yeah. compared to things like finger strength, which is very, very much like what you actually do when you yeah. go climbing. So you've just gotta bear it in mind that individual tests which have a lower specificity have a value, but they're not quite as good as things that are really specific. But if you group them together and you have like this big conglomerate aggregate view, mm -hmm. then it's really, really useful. This yeah. is why I'm trying to show you as many kind of results together to give you a good idea of where you're at. Yeah. Also thought it would be useful and interesting for you guys to have a look at how Pete's upper body strength and conditioning would come out in relation to some of those goal grades that he's working for. He's done a lot of strength tests, challenges. You've done lots of training this side. So we were kind of expecting you to do well on this. Yeah, I would say so. In terms of general strength and conditioning, um, then I would say I'm reasonably good. Uh, maybe not on the complete one repers. I'm not quite as strong, but in terms of like grinding it out, getting it done, then I'm usually pretty good on strength and conditioning. So yeah, and, yeah. and I, I think we can we can see that here. Even on the pull up two rep max, in relation to your grade, is you're scoring 
right up in the in the top oh, yeah. top percentiles of those results. So you're certainly nowhere near to you know weak for the grade. We typically say with our testing for any male athletes that they want to be aiming for around 100 150% of body weight yep. lifted, so their own body weight plus 50 at least as a sort of gold standard within pull-up tests for well-conditioned athletes, around 135% for female athletes. Yeah. Um, and then in relation to the bouldering, you see yourself score a little lower on that, uh, which maybe is logical given that bouldering has a, a higher demand on that yes. peak force um, or strength in the upper body, given the styles that people tend to choose nowadays. Mm -hmm. I think it would be different if everyone was out there vert slab bouldering and yeah, that's yeah. where the cutting edge was <laughs> yeah 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 but it's not yeah uh power endurance on the pull-ups not that's, bad that's actually yeah. what yeah yeah i mean it's on tired. that end yeah considering i was tired yeah. that's not too bad actually yeah. you kind of yeah. hope that that would be pretty good as a route climber you, yeah you should have a reasonable amount of upper body strength endurance endurance yeah no i was i thought that would be lower actually just because i was tired at the end mm. so um Push-ups push push ups in the middle, average. Middle, yeah. Average. Yeah. Definitely better than me anyway. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see that when we'll, that comes around. Yeah, we'll see when that comes around. That's another video, folks. <laughs> yeah, I'll be happy if I can do 35. Uh, low row. I told you you were good yeah, at that. Yeah, low row went well, yeah. That's phenomenally good. Yeah. I was, what high. did I predict? I think I predicted 40 40, that, I think, yeah. Which is good for an elite male. Mm. And yeah, you smashed it out of the park. Yeah, there we go. On that. Cool. No more low row for you. No more low row. Don't need to low row. No low, no low rowing. So what do we need to do for me to get to the 9A trad route? It's sort of self-explanatory, but go for it, Tom. What do we need? What, what are we looking at here? <laughs> you need one thing, primarily. There are <laughs> others, but this one, according to the results that and tests that we've done today, would be finger strength. That's where your time is best used. And I want to remind you that you won't get this just simply by fingerboarding. It has to be fingerboarding and high intensity climbing specific work, i.e. go on a board, go bouldering. Don't just hangboard. I do. I wouldn't want to see you hangboarding for one year now. <laughs> You've got to come up, complement it with bouldering because yeah. it's the skill element as well. Yeah, there we go. Being able to apply the finger strength to the board, Yeah. yeah to, exactly. the, to the rock. Yeah. yeah. From those results, if I was to do no training, yeah. And I was to go out and project hard. Yeah. For, you know, a proper project for a year, try and do it, but no training, sort of just get in there, get stuck in. What could I climb? I would say, from a route climbing perspective, I would definitely back you to climb 8C plus slash 9A, I think, with doing no training at all. You're just getting out there and getting stuck into it. Work it into submission. Yeah. And bouldering grade, I would be pretty comfortable to say, solid 8B, font 8B. I suspect that Pete could actually get up an 8B plus if he chose something that really suited him and worked some of his superpowers. That'd be my, I guess, in a year with no training. There we go, folks. Right, see what happens. If you wanna have a chance to go and do some of this stuff online yourself for free and test yourself, get some grades, get some results, go to my fingers, so just Google it, you fill out the forms, fill out your data, and you can have some little mini reports like this, just free and online. Also, don't forget that when Tom is better, I'm gonna be putting him through exactly the same test with my own little tweaks. Uh, so stay, definitely stay tuned for that one.